Hi all, my name is Johannes Kiesel. I am a PhD student at the Bauhaus Universität Weimar and, like my co-authors, I am part of the Webes group. The research that I present here takes a closer look at a problem that most of you may assume to have been solved long ago. We certainly had this assumption, especially because of the many web content analysis tasks that rely on web page segmentation. However, we found that specifically due to the many different downstream tasks, algorithms for web page segmentation have been developed, optimized and evaluated in many incompatible ways without ever creating the common foundation that would be necessary for a meaningful comparison of algorithms. On the surface, the task of web page segmentation seems straightforward. Group together those elements that belong together, like shown here with the blue frames on the right hand side. Obviously, there can be alternative segmentation. Now, Let's take two plausible segmentations and immediately we get some questions. Which of these segmentations is the better one? Or would you say these segmentations are similar to each other? Now, the scientific literature contains several but sometimes quite different answers to these questions. So we analyzed the existing measures of similarity or quality we found that the difference is largely due to the different tasks that the authors wanted to use the segmentation for. So let me illustrate this through the example tasks that all rely on web page segmentation. First, content extraction. You need to find a segment of the web page that contains the specific content you are interested in, which may be just text. Second, template detection. You need to find a segments of the web page that are the same across several pages, and you would usually describe these through paths on the page's DOM tree. Third, in design mining, you need to find visual segments that fulfill specific functionalities, which allows then designers to query and retrieve existing designs. But though one task requires just text, the other DOM nodes, and the final visuals, all three use segmentation. So we believed there must be a common foundation despite these differences, which would then eliminate the need to define completely new measures for each task. So we took a step back and revisited the concept of the segment. As we analyzed the scientific literature, we really saw how all descriptions of a segment were implicitly based on human perception. So we made this commonality explicit in our concept. Those elements that belong together as pair agreement among a majority of viewers. Though this sounds vague, one has to keep in mind that web pages are created for human viewers and that the segmentation of visual impressions by humans is well studied in psychology. Common principles have been published over a hundred years ago and can thus provide the common foundation for web page segmentation across all downstream tasks. The difference between the tasks, on the other hand, actually lies in the word elements. As per our concept, a web page contains elements, which are grouped together in segments. But what are these elements? Well, they could be the characters of the web page's text, as for content extraction, the nodes of the DOM tree, as for template detection, or the pixels, as for design mining. This choice of elements does not influence the segmentation as such, but it influences whether two segments are similar or not, as this should naturally be based on the amount of elements they share. For this reason, one may also want to just focus on a specific subset of the elements, for example, pixels at a visual edge and thus ignore background pixels. To formalize these observations, we chose the B-cubed evaluation measures from clustering theory. These are three measures 
which calculate the similarity of a segmentation S to a star, the ground truth segmentation. In a nutshell, precision is based on the elements that are segmented together in both segmentations, the true positive, so to say, divided by the number of all elements segmented together in S. Recall has the same numerator, but is divided by the number of all elements segmented together in the ground truth segmentation, a star. As usual, the F measure is the harmonic mean of both. But note that the F measure is symmetric and can thus be used as a general measure of segmentation similarity, even without ground truth. But if we take a closer look at precision, we can see that as long as each segment of S is a subsegment of a segment, star, precision has the maximum value of 1. Precision is thus not affected if S is a more fine-grained version of a star. In the same way, recall is not affected if S is a more coarse-grained version of a star. So taking both allows to immediately identify segmentations that are just made at different levels of detail, but otherwise agree. We then employed this framework to create a new dataset for web page segmentation research, the Webers WebSec20. The dataset is based on the web pages of our Webers Web Archive 17 datasets, which are from a wide array of websites and web genres. We reproduced all web pages from the archives and extracted the location of each DOM node and text content, as they are needed for some segmentation algorithms that work with these kinds of elements. We then filtered out pages that likely just contain one segment and pages that were identified to contain errors in previous works of ours. This left us with 8490 final pages. Now, following our perception based concept of a segment, we used crowdsourcing to have five humans segment each web page. We created results ourselves to assure high quality of segmentations. This screenshot here illustrates the annotation interface, where the annotators were able to track the segments across the screenshots of the web pages. After the annotation, we then used the F measure to assess the agreement of annotators, which is for this case averaged over all pairs of segments for all pages. Now, as the table shows, the agreement was especially high with respect to characters, which is still good for pixels. Now, taking the maximum of precision and recall instead of the F measure ignores the disagreement on the level of detail. All values are now rather close to the maximum of 1, so this indicates that indeed the disagreement of annotators is largely due to them working at different levels of detail. After the crowdsourcing, we then fitted the segments as they were drawn freehand to the DOM nodes in order to remove the inaccuracies inherent in freehand drawing. Finally, the five segmentations of the five annotators per page were fused into a single ground group segmentation per page. For this, we use standard hierarchical clustering. As the similarity measure of the clustering of elements, we employed the number of annotators that put the elements into the same segment. The final dataset, along with all code to reproduce or to work with the data, are of course freely available online. Our contribution is thus twofold. First, we propose a new evaluation framework for web page segmentation that is based on human perception and that provides the means to assess and analyze web page segmentations. It is mostly independent of the downstream tasks but can be adjusted in an intuitive and straightforward way. Second, we also provide a dataset that is about five times larger than comparable datasets. It aims to be more accessible, interoperable and reusable. To this end, we provide segmentations in a standard format and by pages in various formats to suit different algorithms. If needed, where pages can also still be reproduced from the archive. We hope to contribute to making the page segmentation experiments more reproducible 
and thus to foster research on this topic.